So in this video, we'll introduce how to create maps in R. It will really be a very quick introduction, um, but I'll also show you where to find links to learn much more about mapping. So we're going to start with a uh, an example where we use data which have geographic information, accidents, uh, where we know where an accident happened, and then we'll plot the locations of these accidents. So that's the first thing we're going to uh, we're going to do. The full workflow here is available from the Eclair website and you will find a link at the bottom to that page with much more detailed description. So in there you will find that you can get data, accident data uh, for accidents in Greater Manchester and the UK from this location. You'll see the link uh, in the workflow. So we get accidents uh, data. We'll download them so they're here and we shall then save them in our working directory. So what you get here is a CSV file and I shall save that in my working directory, which is gonna be here for today. And I'll take that one away, we'll save that. So it's a CSV file with all sorts of each row corresponds to an accident. And you can see here, easting and northing, that's location information. That's what we will be using. So we um, save that. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. Watch this closeness. It should be saved. Uh, here we go. So the first thing we therefore do that. So there's two things. Firstly, we set a working directory. I saved that uh, work through already where I want it. So then an easy way is to go set WD to the working directory. Well, I'll we'll put that in to the code here. Then we shall import a few libraries we will use for sure. We will um, import a few more a little later and then we will import the data that is the name for the data so let's run that and we should now in our yeah, in our environment we see the act data and just open it here we basically see exactly the same spreadsheet we just saw um, it's always a good idea to you know you can also look at it using it head act data uh, and you can see that and you should also look at the structure so you can see data uh, data types and worth mainly integer numbers no the information we're going to use the easting and the northing and they're both integer data that's great so they're not character then we would have to transfer it so um, let's actually look at a particular, I want to put that in a script file, just do that here, a particular accident. Um, I'll just pick a random one. Okay, so you see there's a particular accident, it was near 2010, some severity, number of vehicles, and so forth. And um, there's the easting and northing information. So that's what we uh, that's what we want. So you could, of course, just isolate that bit of information. Let's go back to here and only look at easting and northing. So that's some location information. And you may wonder, hey, where uh, where is that actually? And um, so it's not, Easting and Norving is not the same here as sort of degrees east, lo longitude and attitude. So it's not longitude or attitude. I just uh, Googled a little bit to, to see where, uh, where that is or how that uh, information is um, basically used. And after a bit of Googling, I found this page, uh, Grid Ref reference finder and uh, you can already see it seems to be a British and we'll see the reason for that some sort of British 
uh, mesh of location. It has an easting um, and three eight seven two and a norving. You can also use latitude and longitude, but that's not what we have here. And six, and then we'll check, and you'll see that you just find a place uh, here, Hayward Street, uh, in Bury, Greater Manchester. Uh, so we can sort of uh, see where that is. That's just uh, that's Bury, and then that is here's Manchester. It doesn't say here, but. Um, that's where Manchester is. Now, what is the meaning of the 381172 and the 41? We may wonder, okay, what's the reference here? 381172 relative to what? Well, the reference we'll usually find out if we go to 00. zero. Let's see where that is. Okay. And uh, it looks all blue, so it seems to be uh, somewhere in the sea. And if we scroll out, we can indeed see where that is. And you can see it's somewhere to the bottom left of the United Kingdom. OK, so so this is indeed some uh, UK specific reference and everything in the UK is to the right and to the north of that point. So we only have positive Eastings and Northings here. All right. So what we're going to do now is we just use this as any sort of x and y variable as if you had what I say you know age is an income so we're gonna create a ggplot we're using this act data we're using for x we're using the easting information for y we are using the northing information and then we are just producing a scatter plot okay so let's run this and see what we get. Right, so here, what we what we get is this plot, and this is just x and y information for each accident. But what you can already see here is that you can basically see the road network of Manchester. Okay, so that is sort of a very simple map without our knowing that we are actually doing some mapping here. Uh, so I didn't know that this is some geographic uh, information. Now we could, of course, do other things. Let's create another graph where we now see whether the color of the dots will we color that according to road class. Okay, and then we will add a title here uh, as well. So what we then get is uh, this guy. Let me just make that bigger. OK, so now you can see that different colors are just different road classes. The dark color, this is the motorway. You see there's sort of a ring road. And of course, there are accidents on the ring road. And then the very light colors are sort of local, uh, more local streets. Right? So you can just see the um, basically the, the road network. Could also just change that. For instance, there's a severity index. Okay, how severe is the accident? Um, so we can change that to severity. We rerun this. Let's zoom that. Zoom that out. You can see that sort of lighter colors are less severe accidents. Severity one are the most severe accidents. And you can see that they are basically dotted all over uh the place there isn't necessarily particular hot spots of very severe accidents at least not on uh, having a cursory uh plants okay so that was basically creating maps without really using any map specific tools we have location information and then we can uh create maps so now, however, we're going to start using some map specific tools and we're going to uh, load a few more libraries. And of course, you know that if you don't have these packages, you have to install them first. Tmap, SF, SPData and maps um, are packages we are going to use. So let's first actually do 
the following. Okay. Run this line, d underscore world uh, is assigned to world. Okay. Um, so this creates a new object, d world. Okay, has 177 observations with 11 variables. So let's look at what that is. So one of the packages, I think it's the SF package, here provides this. Okay, this is we can um, actually check the help function for world. Um, ah, it comes from the SP data. It comes from the SP data um, package. Okay, and so what you can see here is that basically. It's a, it's a table where the first piece of information here is for, Fi for Fiji. It's an abbreviation, it's a country name, which continent is it. Uh, there's also some extra information like the size, population, life expectancy, GDP. But then there's something important, uh, important here, which we don't see here. It says one more variable, geom multipolygon. So this is now the important thing we need if we want to create proper maps. Okay, the geom information for a country. So let's look at that a, uh, in a little bit more detail. And to do that, we'll isolate a particular country. Let's say Norway. Okay, so we're going to D world and we're looking only at the geom and we're picking out the country Norway okay and then let's look at this okay no geom what is that now so it's a geometry set for one feature for one country multi-polygon now what does that what does that mean what is a multi-polygon so let's see firstly we're going to check. Oh, sorry. We run this line length of Norgeom. So we can look at Norgeom here as sort of a, a list. Let's look at the length of the first element of that list, four. And then look at, let's look at the first element of that. So I'm going to take that length away. Okay, so what you see here is what's called a polygon. And now for Norway, we have four of these. And what these things are, these are points. So there are 18 points. And basically, there's a piece of land, part of Norway, which is defined by 18 points and the connections between these points. And they produce a shape. And to define Norway, we have four of these. So that may still be a little bit abstract. So let's look at this. So let's actually plot a map here. We can do that with the um, tmap package. Okay, tmap shape. We um, refer to our just Norway data set. Okay. And want some borders and then we plot this. Oh, uh, yeah, we, uh, no. Got to run this, run this, and then we plot the map. So in here you see the map. Okay. Let me assume that so I can see it. Okay, so here's that map. And now you see there are four shapes that define Norway. These are some islands. Um, and here you see Norway. And you can see there's basically there's sort of 18 points that define this shape and the connections between these points. Right? That's what a polygon is. But we have several shapes that describe that country. So they're multi polygons. So when you do mapping, what you need is this information for each country. Okay, so we had the um, shape number one, uh, then we have shape number two, that has eight points, shape number three, that has 12 points, and shape number four, oh, that's actually the big, 
has 50 points. That's the big one. Okay, 18. That was possibly that um, that other smaller island a little to the uh, top left. Okay, so that's the information you need. Now, in that package, provides that world item. Okay, which has these shapes for world maps for basically the um, for each country. So we could go uh, and we can just feed in D world instead of D Norway, D world. And then we get a world map. Okay, there we go. Okay, here we got it. Now we have a world map. Okay, so that if you just want countries, then these shapes come very easy, easily using that function world, which creates that um, ob that object. You can, of course, now do um, other interesting things. You could, for instance, uh, let's say we want only African countries. So we take our e world map. We don't want to filter a name, but now we are filtering a continent. Okay, so we say continent, uh, we want Africa, and then we print that shape, the Africa. Okay, and uh, what have we done? Uh, the Africa, I mean, yes, little a. So we have the Africa of little a, we're creating the map and then we are printing the map and it still didn't work. Object the Africa not found. I didn't, I think I didn't run that command. So now it should be working. And now we have a map only of the African countries. So this is fantastic. Okay, it's very easy to create maps. Now, however, usually um, you don't just want to print a map, but you want to display some information about the countries in that map. So let's continue on with Africa. And in that object world, in uh, see that, let's see it here. So if you click names and D world, can you see there's a number of variables about information about the countries already put into here, okay? Uh, the size, life expectancy, GDP per capita, and so forth. So let's create a map that shows the GDP per capita by color in the countries. Right? So we have first the same sort of map, but now we say plus TM fill, and what do we want? We want to show per capita. Some style variable, you can play with that, uh, and then we put a title to this as well. So map three. Here we have map three. Okay, now the different shades of green show you different sort of GDP per capita information. The darker, the higher the GDP per capita. Okay, the lighter, the lower, and you have a little legend down here. So that's super easy, right? Now this is super easy here because that object, D world, which we uh, which we got with all of these variables has this information already in there. So if you want to create another map, there's a number of things which you which you need, and that's very important to understand, okay? You need that shape information, the multi-polygons. Then you need the information about the variable you want to display. And then you need to merge the two together in this file, like, you want to have a file like dworld, where one variable is the geometry, the multi-polygons, and another variable is for your region, that may be a state, maybe a country, it may be a postcode. For that region, you have the shape, but then you also have some information about that region. So that's what you need. And now we're going to do an example where we collect these things from different places and then put them together for a map. So the example we'll be using is that we use some small regions in England that are called lower layer super output areas. So they're just small. You'll see how small they are in a, in a moment. And we will try and show 
how deprived these regions are. And for that, we will be uh, using what is called an index of multiple deprivation. So we are using uh, lower super output areas and we're looking for an index of multiple deprivation uh, here. So we now need these two information. We need the shape information for the lower super output areas and then we need the IMDs for that. We need to merge it and then we map it. So again, in the full workthrough, which you can see linked from the description, you'll see a link to, to this area where you can get the shapes, the boundaries, okay, for lower super output areas. And you can sort of um, download this uh, thing, for instance, full clip. There are slightly different versions. In fact, I'm not exactly sure what the different versions are. When you download this, you will get a um, you will get a zipped folder, and that zipped folder will be a bunch of files. The most important information here isn't that SHP in the shapes, but you need to keep all of these files together. Okay? So you extract that into your working folder. You extract the whole folder into your working folder. And then you can import this by using the stread command. Okay, and then you just you have your working directory, and then there's that folder which you just downloaded, and then the shape file. Now, in this case, because these are very small areas, these are like really small regions, this is actually a very big file and it, take, it takes a while. So to make the job easier here, I've already prepared um, some data for you. And instead of doing this, we're importing basically the equivalent of that D world file um, with this command. And you can, again, in the full description, uh, you can you can see uh, the link. It will link to this file on the Eclair page. And from here, you can download that file. So here you see a download button. If you download that, uh, what you get is you get that file necities underscore LSOA R data. You save that in your um, working folder, and then we can upload that here. Um, yeah, perhaps not uh, save that in my folder, copy, I'll call it temp. Yeah, I haven't saved it yet, so I need to save that uh, first. Copy that. And put that. Ah, yeah, now it's here, so now this should load. Indeed, now it loads, and we have this NE uh, cities here. Uh, and you see we have some information amongst others, the geometry. Okay, these are the multi polygons. Right? We also have a name and the code of these little areas. So that's the first bit of information we need. Let's just look at uh, one of them. Okay, yeah, in Liverpool, there's a an area and it just has again this multi polygon, multi -polygon and has a code. And this one uniquely references that particular area in Liverpool. So we could now plot like we plotted the world map we could just now plot this okay um, now there is a different way we can use ggplot to plot maps above we used uh, the tmp package uh, in the complete workthrough you can also see how we can use ggplot to to produce this africa uh, map but now i'm going to use ggplot here so it's ggplot the data is uh, UK, uh, sorry, it's not UK, it's NE cities, NE cities.lsoa, and 
Yeah, and let's see what we get. Okay, so what we get is this thing here. It's a map. Now, in that file, any cities LSOA, I only collected the LSOA, so four cities in the north of uh, of the UK, of England, Newcastle, Liverpool, Sheffield and Leeds. And that's what you can see here. And I took out everything else. So we only have these four cities here. And that's what you can see here. Okay, now what we need now is we need to merge the information about the level of deprivation in each of these little areas. So again, in the description, you will find a, uh, a link to, um, to that data file uh, with the index of multiple deprivation. And again, I may not have gotten a file in the folder yet. So I just took a little break to have it in the folder yet and uh, put in the folder. We should now be able to load it. Yes, we have the IMD. Um, and you see there's a number of information amongst others, these codes here and the names of the LSOEs. And we have this sort of index of multiple deprivation. We are going to give these, you can see these variable names are fairly long. So we just give them uh, shorter names amongst others geocode okay which is okay, on this and on this geocode which is exactly the same name as we had above in our shape file information okay when we looked at uh, our ne cities we also have geocode. Uh, we're going to use that information to map match the information. So we're only interested in the IMD index of multiple deprivation of our four northern cities. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that IMD and we filter for local authority names, so that's the cities, Sheffield, Leeds, Liverpool, and Newcastle. So we have an IMD North. Now, what we now do is we will merge that information since both have that geocode information, the sort of unique identifier for each um, LSOA. That merging process is very simple. We just use the merge function. And then we look at So North LSOA, ah, yeah, here we go, North LSOA. So we have now the geocode, we have the geometry down here, but we also have the IMD rank and decile. So we've basically recreated the structure that our D underscore world file tab now just with LSOAs and indexes, indices of multiple deprivation. And what we're going to do now is we'll just use our ggplot function here. Okay, so geom underscore sf that creates maps from shape files. So not geom point when we had just the x and y coordinates. Now we have these multi polygons. You need to use geom underscore sf. We have north LSOE and we want to fill the de the the shapes with a color according to the decile of the index of multiple deprivation. What that exactly means, I'll so show in a moment. And we have a title and coordinates. So let's produce that plot. Takes just a moment. And here we got it. Let me zoom out and get it. Okay. So here's our zoom. Here you have the four cities. And you can basically see dark and light shapes will improve that. Okay, that's actually before I explain it in detail, we improve it first. So we have these four shapes here. Okay, and a lot of white space. So let's produce four maps just with each city and then show them next to 
uh, show them next to each other and that will make our life much easier. So the way we're going to do this in ggplot is we're going to create four different um, LSOA files for Sheffield, Leeds, Liverpool, and Newcastle. We're always filtering by the local authority name. And then we are creating four plots, basically the same sort of plot as before, and we give them a name, plot Sheffield, plot Leeds, and so forth. So we'll do that here. And once we've done that, we can arrange them. So we now have four plots. So for instance, we could look at p.newcastle. Okay, so this is now the Newcastle plot. Actually, let's look at that for a moment. So here's the large ver version of that plot. So you see, this is Newcastle with all of the uh, LOAEs, the little areas. Light areas are more affluent ones. Dark areas are um, more deprived ones. So all we want to do now is we have four of these plots, put them into basically one plot to make it easier to sort of look at them together. There's a package called Crit Extra we're going to load, and you may have to install if you don't have it yet to make that easy. And then there's this Crit Arrange, or basically using all of the four plots we created, and we'll arrange them in two, two rows. Um, and then we get, we get this beautiful plot. Okay, basically for all the four cities just arranged in one plot, we have these areas. And now you can see where in the different cities sort of the deprived areas are and where the more affluent areas are. So this is really all I wanted to show as an introduction. The important thing is for you to understand in order to, to work with um, in order to work with maps is that what you need is you need the geometry information, so the shape files, the multipolygons. You need the variable you want to sort of plot. You need to merge them, and then you can use either TMP or ggplot to create very nice maps. So I wish you much fun with this new skill. It's great, great fun creating maps.